The unsung heroes of Doctor Who are the actors who, through the 30 years, suffered inside these wonderful monster costumes in hot studios. Their patience was extraordinary. I mean, if I were them, I'd have run off. Full of admiration for them. this hobby was it was so heavy when you were in the costume you could not stand upright you were looking out of a tiny observation hatch about there about the size of a, of a small letterbox and uh, the zombies were quite useless because once we got mobile we were crashing into cameras and into scenery very claustrophobic, you know, I mean, the mouthpiece was so small and the eyes were tiny, really tiny, that you could, all you could see was ahead of you all the time. I think even people in the studio were amazed that there was a fellow inside those darlings. Even now, people tend to think, ah, were they radio controlled? Well, I wasn't really sure what the Daleks were, really. I think I'd sort of thought it was some kind of confluence of midgets and tricycles. But the the people who played the Daleks are all these kind of quite tall, willowy men. And they all dressed in black roll necks and black trousers. Now, with the top off, you see what the Dalek is inside. I control the eye stick with a periscope down here, sometimes even push by your nose. The plunger here we use for opening doors or controlling riots. My other hand can control the gun, which goes negative, positive, exterminating them, but no blood and gore, just clean death. BBC explosion. The Daleks kept very much to themselves. I suppose it's like Robert De Niro or something in Cape Fear that they did, felt that they really couldn't mix with the rest of the cast. I don't know, I thought we might become friends. You know, it was a bit sad, right? We had to come out of the water looking really menacing. Now, we didn't have any rehearsal on it because there was never any time. Our instructions were to duck underneath the water, count to eight, and all come up at the same time. Well, we popped up out of the water, and we were now trying to climb up this shingle beach, coping with all this water that was draining out of our helmets, coughing and spluttering, falling over our shoes that were very, very badly fitted. I could see! I could see again! <laughs> Morbius was a Frankenstein monster and he had this huge brain in this like goldfish bowl and my head in fact was inside its neck and at the end of it I had to get chased by all these nuns and they pushed me over this cliff and the fall I had to do was about 15 feet but it was particularly difficult because of the weight of this goldfish bowl. I did strain my neck doing that one. And the Cybermen was quite a, a, a nice suit, basically, because it was a wet suit. But perspiration just used to pour all the way through into your eyes, straight into the wet suit, all the way through. So you can imagine what it was like at the end of the day. These were just world extras, and they weren't paid to do stunts. And all these Cybermen had to get wiped out. So it was down to me to double all their deaths. <laughs> I've done, in actual fact, 110 episodes of Doctor Who, mostly as Daleks. 110! The mind boggles, man and boy. We are the masters of Earth. We are 
And now, episode four of Planet of the Daleks.